What up African world, it's Home Team here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. Also, welcome back to my video series, A Closer Look. Today, we're going to be taking a closer look at the Baule people of Cote d'Ivoire. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and contributing to this content. On Patreon, you can find more in-depth courses on African history. And with a word from my sponsors, there's a new social media platform dedicated to educating and uplifting our people. No longer do we have to be censored for speaking our truth. OBT Social is black owned and operated, and a place where you can post your businesses and even monetize your content. You can visit the website at obtsocial.com. Links to everything in the description box below. As with all my Closer Look videos, I try my best to pronounce names or titles that the people use themselves. So please bear with me if you notice any mispronunciations. Also, with videos like these, textbook knowledge on any particular ethnic group will have errors. At times, the scholarship may have assumptions that don't reflect a proper historical perspective. So if you are from this particular African ethnic group, I would really appreciate any additional insight, correction, or revised context so that we can truly understand these African people as best we can. The Baule people belong to the Twi group of the Akan language family. They are believed to number around 1 to 2 million people, making them one of the largest ethnic groups in the West African country of Cote d'Ivoire today. There's also a sizable amount of Baule people living in Ghana as well. According to oral tradition, the Baule were originally a part of the Asante Confederation centered in Ghana, but a succession struggle ensued, forcing them to break away from this Asante Union. This breakaway was reportedly led by Queen Arura Pakou. Succession disputes are by no means rare in African history. It's one of the primary reasons why many African kingdoms and empires went into decline, and thus, the story of the Baole people reflect this in a similar way. Queen Arura Pakou is acknowledged as the founder, if you will, of the Baole people. It's difficult to gather all the details of the story with clarity because of our lack of access to oral historians, but in general, she's believed to have been a member of Asante royalty and a niece to the great Ose Tutu. Following a struggle over leadership, Aurora and her followers traveled west and made it to a river. Unfortunately, the river was seemingly hazardous to cross, and she sought counsel from a priest who told her that if she offered a sacrifice, her and her followers would be able to cross safely. She made the biggest sacrifice for her people, her own son, and in doing so, she called out Baule, meaning the child is dead, and thus the Baule people were born. It's safe to say that the Baule people, though originally a part of the Asante Confederacy, are a people with an entirely new experience and identity. Their worldview evolved as they traveled, settled, and interacted with other African ethnic groups. The Baule people see the world in three realms. The realm of the gods, the realm of people and nature spirits, and the realm of the ancestors. Ancestor veneration and the belief that the soul is immortal is one of the central parts of their spiritual beliefs. The Baule formed connections with other African ethnic groups in which they traded luxurious items produced by Baule women. By the mid 19th century, the Baule people became prosperous from a north-south trade. Interestingly enough, their migration and relocation gradually undermined their previous centralized hierarchical society. And so, by the time the French came into the region, the Baule people were broken up into decentralized villages, bound by kinship and commerce. Like their Ashanti counterparts, the Baule people were among the best resistors to colonial domination. In 1900, the French began a series of military campaigns against the Baule, but they proved no match for the Baule's guerrilla warfare tactics. Attempts to tax Baule merchants' trade also met with strong resistance. The colonial government began to destroy their crops and villages. This strategy was the most effective because the destruction of crops caused a famine and resistance ultimately became unsustainable. 
but eventually they began to rise as a people because they were no strangers to power struggles. If we can recall, their very existence is because of a power struggle. And so, consequently, the Baule exercised considerable influence within the colonial cultivar, helping Ivorians vocalize their demands for decolonization in the 1940s. The Baule's most famous nationalist leader, Felix Hafouet Boigny, led the country to independence in 1960. Hofuet Boigny ruled the country for the next 30 years, during which the Baule became the most influential and richest ethnic group in the Cote d'Ivoire. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help in this continued production, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace. Hey, hey.